Hi, and a very good evening to all of you. Welcome back to our session of Daily Current Affairs. I hope you all are doing fine and your preparation for RBI Grade B Phase 2 examination is also up to the mark. I'm sure that you all are following the timetable that we all had shared with you, right? So uh, do make sure that you follow it sincerely. Uh, even if you are starting from the scratch, even today also, it's not too late. You can just double your preparation but i hope that is not the situation and you all are going to excel in phase two exam now let's just start with our uh, session for current affairs today with the very first question where is india's first display fab facility located so basically fab kya hota hai? what is fab fab is a fabrication unit or fabrication unit kisko kehte hai? Any semiconductor manufacturing unit is known as a fabrication unit. You all are aware about the National Semiconductor Manufacturing Mission that India has under introduced to uh, start with indigenous uh, manufacturing of semi semiconductors in our countries in order to you know minimize the imports to import substitution ki tarah ek kaam karega you know atma nirbhar bharat. So, you, so India aims to manufacture semiconductors indigenously and save on the import bill and uske liye ye hamari country ka sabse bada ek manufacturing unit open up hone ja raha hai in the state of Telangana jiska investment cost will be worth worth rupees 25 crore worth rupees 25 crore and this is not only under India's uh, semiconductor mission but also Telangana government also introduced semiconductor manufacturing mission last month. So you see se related hai. Okay. So this PAP facility it will be set up in Telangana by LST. So LST is actually a subsidiary of Rajesh Exports. Rajesh, Rajesh Exports is a Fortuna uh, Global 500 companies, so it is a subsidiary of Rajesh Export. It will be set up in Telangana at a cost of rupees 25,000 crore. The fabrication unit, FAB is a fabrication unit manufacturing plant of semiconductor devices. Here the plant will manufacture a generation 6 AMOLED, dis AMOLED display. So AMOLED display, basically semiconductors you all know kaha pa use hota hai. Semiconductors are used in your smartphones, they are used in your laptops, they are used in the television screens and every electronic uh, product, every electronic good that you use, it has a role of semiconductor in it. So National Electronics Missions ko, Mission ko bhi promote karne ke liye semiconductor, indigenous manufacture of semiconductor is very important and AMOLED display AMOLED display is a type of a display that is uh, a type of a display that is uh, offered or uh, you know a technology that is made available through the, these types of semiconductors. Basically, matlab ye hai ki jo semiconductors hai generation 6 AMOLED display ke, they will give AMOLED display uh, technology, they will provide AMOLED display technology to all the indigenous electronics manufacturers in our country. Okay. So it is one of the largest investments in high-tech manufacturing sector in India. Fine. So how much financial assistance is given to innovators under startups for railways policy? Startups for railways policy, the Ministry of Railway, the Union Minister of Railway introduced innovation of Indian railway policy recently that aims to invite startups from the industry to provide them with prototype models uh, to work as a solution oriented project railway mein jitne bhi problem aati hai be it traffic management be it rail breakage be it lack of monitoring leading to accidents leading to delays leading to operational inefficiencies and losses to the indian railways Un Cheezo ko kam karne ke liye to minimize those losses, to minimize those operational inefficiency and mishappenings, a solution-oriented program has been forged up by the Union Minister of Railway to invite startups from the industry so that they can provide prototype models, they can provide prototype models to uh, the Indian Railway. 
the indian railway will accept those prototype prototype model if they you know fix the solution that is uh, faced by faced by the railways okay so any prototype models ko fund karega indian railway kis extent tak fund karega that is the question how much financial assistance to iska correct answer hai financial assistance of 1.5 crores will be advanced by the indian railways rest ye 1.5 crores it should be up to the maximum of 50% of the cost of the project okay agar 50% of the cost of the project tak 15 1.5 crore ban raha then the indian railway will uh, provide capital ex assistance to this extent beyond that beyond that uh beyond that the startups will have to arrange the finances privately as all the other companies do. so let's have a look at the details for the details about this startups msmes innovators entrepreneurs all are invited under this program startup for railways or india railway innovation policy irip policy to encourage young entrepreneurs to come up with ideas to improve operational efficiency and safety we have already discussed about it okay so the submission the submission of the tenders or the submission of the prototype models that we talked about it will be made available on this website financial grant itna milega which is up to 50% of the capital cost okay so the payment will be based on based on performance and achievement milestone capital grant milega but based on the performance or achievement milestone or the prototype model that is uh, presented to the indian railway by the startup when was intensive diarrhea control fortnight launched intensive diarrhea control fortnight was launched in the year 2014 2014 say the union ministry of health and railway has been con uh, conducting intensive diarrhea control fortnight right the objective objective of idfc 2022 2022 ka objective kya hai to attain zero child deaths due to childhood diarrhea so the problem is the key problem here is that most of the under under 5 mortality rate among children that is abhi bhi diarrhea is the leading cause of the maximum fatalities that is experienced by under 5 mortality children. okay so why why because there is lack of awareness according to national family health uh, survey 5 jo hum logo ne apne video mein bhi cover kiya hai uh, according to nfhs 5 uh, the government of india has been administering uh, the families sorry the families have been administering only ors solution 60 and that to only 60% of the family uh, administer ors solution ओके एंड ऑफ कोर्स ओ आर एस प्लस जिंक जो एक बेटर सोल्यूशन है डायरिया का दैट इज एडमिनिस्टर टू द चिल्ड्रन ओनली बाई थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ द फैमिली प्रॉब्लम क्या है लैक ऑफ अवेयरनेस पीपल डोंट नो पीपल डोंट नो द बेनिफिट्स ऑफ ओ आर एस प्लस जिंक कॉम्बिनेशन पीपल डोंट नो हाउ ओ आर एस एक्चुअली वर्क तो लीडिंग कॉज वाई डायरिया कॉजेस फेटिलिटी अमंग चिल्ड्रन बेसिकली बिकॉज इट कॉजेस डिहाइड्रेशन एंड लॉस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोलाइट्स एंड दैट इज वाई that is why some of the key objectives some of the key objectives of the scheme would be to administer zinc administer doses of zinc and ors solution to children to spread awareness among families that yes solution exists right in your home solution exists right next to right in your next to door medical store okay and of course uh, one more thing that is important is that Uh, see diarrhea uh, basically is a very very avoidable situation emissions like swachh bharat ke jitna bhi awareness campaign ho raha hai the main cause address the main causes of diarrhea which uh, originates from contamination of food and water so food safety swachh bharat all these missions they should be helping in curbing diarrhea okay so of course they have they have curbed diarrhea because according to srs report srs ka 2019 ka hi report hai not very old it is a report from 2019 that child mortality rate has reduced from 45 per 1000 live births in 2014 to 35 per 1000 live births in 
ओके सो फोर्टी फाइव पर थाउजेंड लाइव वर्ड्स टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन में और थर्टी फाइव पर थाउजेंड लाइव वर्ड्स टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन में इट इज अ कंपेरिजन दैट चाइल्ड मोर्टैलिटी हैज रिड्यूस्ड बट इट स्टिल एक्सिस्ट तो दैट इज ऑल्सो नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल सो इसीलिए इंटेंसिव डायरिया कंट्रोल प्रोग्राम का ऑब्जेक्टिव ही यही है टू रिड्यूस चाइल्ड मोर्टैलिटी ड्यू टू दिस डिजीज टू जीरो so i think we have discussed more than required on this topic very very interesting topic although you should know that in the government of india also runs the uh, program on uh, curbing diarrhea and pneumonia it is a joint program you should read and research more about it if you want to so what is intensive diarrhea fortnight launched we've already i guess covered this question right why is it the next question this is the next question at how many locations at how many locations approximately was the 2022 pradhan mantri national apprenticeship apprenticeship mela organized kitni locations pe ye organize kiya gaya let's have a look at the correct answer it will be organized at approximately more than 200 locations in india inviting more than 1000 companies from across 36 sectors to participate in the mela so basically pradhan mantri apprenticeship program you all already must be knowing about the program it aims to promote employment of opportunities uh, you know specially to under skilled and semi skilled youth population by providing them training that training is basically known as apprenticeship okay so basically from 36 more than 36 uh, sectors will apply uh, will participate in apprenticeship and that does not restrict itself to carpentry but it also have a variety of other sectors including from agriculture including from manufacturing for example solar mitra solar mitra is a scheme by the ministry of new and renewable energy so that is also type of an apprenticeship program so renewable energy is also an important sector that will be taking part it will train it will train people semi skilled under skilled rural and urban youth into repair maintenance and installation of solar power panels तो ये क्यों बताया मैंने आपको जस्ट टू गिव यू एन इनसाइट एंड एन ओवरव्यू व्हाट दिस प्रधानमंत्री नेशनल अप्रेंटिसशिप मेला इज ऑल अबाउट इट इज लॉन्च बाय द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ स्किल डेवलपमेंट इट इंक्लूड्स अ वैरायटी ऑफ सेक्टर्स फ्रॉम अ रेंज ऑफ इंडस्ट्री प्लेयर्स हु विल बी पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन द मेला फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग अपॉर्चुनिटीज फॉर बीइंग हायर्ड एज अप्रेंटिस विद इन द कंपनीज individuals having 5th to 12th grade pass certificate a skills training certificate are eligible to apply for the apprenticeship of course and national council for vocational education they will be completing their training they will be certified by ncvet okay <clears throat> Which state is running special health care abhiyan called Anchal for pregnant women? So it is a special health care prog uh, program that monitors the health condition of pregnant women, and this uh, scheme has been launched by the state government of Rajasthan. So basically, some certain basic basic uh, issues will be monitored, like what. like intake of iron and nutrition you know remaining stress free taking care of the health all these things will be monitored the government of india through aganwadis they already implement this program so this is uh, one of the initiatives by Ra rajasthan government so auxiliary nurses midwife and asha workers will be the key implementers of the scheme so this is one of the इसी से रिलेटेड इसी से रिलेटेड क्यों ना मैं आपको एक इम्पॉर्टेंट इंटरेस्टिंग फैक्ट बताऊं दैट इंडिया एंड नीदरलैंड आल्सो केम इनटू अ पार्टनरशिप अ फ्यू इयर्स अगो यू नो दे स्टार्टेड टू प्रमोट इनिशिएटिव्स लाइक कैंगरू मदर केयर कैंगरू मदर केयर एंड रेंज ऑफ अदर इनिशिएटिव टू यू नो हेल्प प्रेगनेंट टू मॉनिटर द हेल्थ ऑफ प्रेगनेंट वुमेन इन इंडिया इट्स अ पैन इंडिया प्रोग्राम ये स्टेट गवर्नमेंट का एक छोटे से डिस्ट्रिक्ट में ग्रास रूट लेवल प्रोग्राम है तो ऑफकोर्स ऑल दीज थिंग्स आर वेरी वेरी 
uh, assuring that uh, people are taking initiatives to take care of women and child development together. So another interesting question we have here is to encourage tribal people to engage in horticulture, agriculture, farm forestry activities to increase their income and prevent migration. NABARD has been making continuous efforts. It is about a scheme. Statement based question is schemes related. So, one such effort is to organize mango festival in Madhya Pradesh on an annual basis under one of its flagship program. Identify the program. Aapko ye program identify karna hai. Now the correct answer here is Vadi. Vadi is the name of the program that is to be identified. Vadi uh, Nabad ka ek program hai. Vadi basically uh, is a Gujarati word. Vadi is a Gujarati word hai, which means orchard and agroforestry. Okay, so basic aim is ka kya hai? reverse migration, ko, uh, sorry, migration to urban areas ko control karna. How? Through wadi, through agroforestry, horticulture and orchard farming. Trees ki jo farming hoti, usko promote karke what will ultimately happen? It will boost farmer income. Of course, and when the farmer's income will be boosted, they will, they will have uh, less and less incentives to uh, migrate to the urban areas. The rural economy... Uh, will be when the rural economy is more prosperous, obviously people do not want to migrate to urban areas. That is one of the crux or the key objective of the Padi scheme that is launched with by uh, Nabad. Hosted fifth uh, state uh, mango level festival in news mein kyo aya tha? Or why is this MCQ being asked? So abhi recently news mein tha that Nabad wrote this. Fifth state level mango festival under Vadi program. So, jitne bhi mango farmers or mango uh, orchards ki jo farming karte hain, unke business ko promote to promote their business, uh, they started fifth state level mango festival to encourage tribal farms to, of course, sell their produce. It is it aims to encourage tribal farmers to engage in horticulture, farm forestry activities in order to increase their income and prevent migration. Nabad has been organizing a mango festival every year. He has a festival organized in Bhopal since 2018, selling different varieties of mango. You all know these are varieties, some important varieties of mango which are famous all over the country. Alfonso mango, they are exported from India to countries like UK at very, very high rates. I think it also has a GI tag. So, uh, you know, varieties of mango are very, very common in India. GI tag khatam band is a product that belongs to which of the following state? So, correct answer here is Jammu and Kashmir ko khatam band product belong karta hai. Jammu and Kashmir recently celebrated Paddy Transplantation Day. So basically, paddy transplantation is hota hai? It is a process where the original crop is grown in a nursery and then it is transplanted to the farm. Okay, so basically it is a water saving technique. Paddy otherwise is a water guzzling crop that uh, you know has the chances of reducing the level of groundwater table, but because of transplantation, because of transplantation, paddy transplantation, the Jammu and Kashmir uh, a government uh, has uh, you know found an innovative way to harvest paddy without wasting a lot of water and that is why they are celebrating paddy transplantation day across the valley and various varieties of paddy hai usme se ek aapka mcq mein aaya tha native paddy varieties you can read the names over here okay so that is why this mcq was also in news GI tag ke baare mein aap jaan lo, GI tag kya hota, it is uh, obviously it is uh, assigned or issued by the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. WTO mein India ka jo patent requirement hai, trade related, uh, trade related uh, prices, trips. So ye uska hai, they are given under GI uh, tag uh, goods and registration and they are valid for a period of 10 years. 10 saal tak ye valid rehte hai, uske baad inko renew karwana padta hai. And G another more important thing is that the GI tag is issued for both agri, they are issued for both agri and manufactured goods. 
एग्री एंड मैन्युफैक्चर गुड्स दोनों के लिए जी आई टैग को इशू किया जाता है ओके एंड कंप्लीट स्टेट वाइड लिस्ट फॉर जी आई प्रोडक्ट सम इम्पॉर्टेंट स्टेट वाइज लिस्ट ऑफ जी आई प्रोडक्ट दैट कैन बी आस्ट इन योर एग्जाम इट इज गिवेन इन द लिंक बिलो यू कैन चेक इट आउट these are some gi tag products from uh, the state of jammu and kashmir saffron we all know very very popular khatam band is the art of making sealing and of course kashmiri pashmina shawl which is uh, made out of a very important chang lang variety of goat that is unique to the state of jammu kashmir uh, sorry to the union territory of jammu kashmir and ladakh so these are very important this is the highest and the most expensive uh, export from the state of jammu and kashmir to other countries in how many aspirational and high burden district will the fortified rice be distributed so basically what is rice fortification rice fortification is the process where rice is, uh, in various nutrients like iron vitamin and folic acid is added to the rice now this fortification can be done in two ways they can either be biological or it can be you know superficial after the rice is properly harvested and polished so abhi pds mein jo rice fortified rice mil raha it is uh, not biological biological rice fortification would include genetically mo genetic modification of the rice crop to fortified right from the stage of cultivating it okay this this fortified rice that we are discussing about that we read about in news in our day to day current affairs that the government of india has taken the initiative to distribute fortified rice uh, through pds uh, basic uska objective kya hai to uh, that is not biological that is superficial after harvesting and polishing these nutrients are added to the rice they are distributed to in you know, poverty line families through the pds and basic reason is ka ye hai to address the macro or micro nutrient deficiency among the population why because food security is one issue that the pds is addressing but the question arises how is pds thing address pds addressing uh, nutritional deficiency in india so nutrition deficiency ko address karne ke liye fortified rice is a very very important very very significant innovation taken up by the government in how many aspirational districts and high burden districts will the fortified rice be distributed so you have these options the correct answer here is 173 okay so in these uh, many districts fortified uh, rice will be distributed sorry not 173 i was wrong the correct answer here is 291 291 districts में फोर्टिफाइड राइस को डिस्ट्रीब्यूट किया जाएगा हाई बर्डन डिस्ट्रिक्ट एस्पिरेशनल एंड हाई बर्डन डिस्ट्रिक्ट हाई बर्डन मीन्स हाई रेट ऑफ न्यूट्रिशनल डेफिशेंसी विद यू नो जहाँ पे चाइल्ड वेस्टिंग चाइल्ड स्टंटिंग जैसी प्रॉब्लम ज्यादा प्रेवलेंट है उन डिस्ट्रिक्ट को सबसे पहले टारगेट किया जाएगा एंड हाउ मेनी मेट्रिक टर्म्स ऑफ फोर्टिफाइड राइस विल बी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड you all already know you can take a screenshot of this uh, slide if you want uh, whatsoever we will we will share the pdf of this slide on our telegram channel so it will be there providing fortified rice to all icds pm portion mid day meal beneficiary the first phase during 2021 22 around 17 lakh metric tons of fortified rice has been distributed under id icds and pm portion meaning of rice fortification it is a process of adding micronutrients ye hum log already discuss kar chuke hain target kya hai rice fortification ka social safety net scheme hai ye it is a social safety net scheme uh, according to which india loses about 1% of its gdp due to iron deficiency and anemia of course anemia is very much prevalent in india among children among young girls so uske liye bhi ye kafi zyada beneficial hai moving on to the next question what is the base year for calculating all india consumer price price inflation the base year for calculating all india consumer price and price inflation currently is 
2012 base year change hota rehta hai you all know the concept of base year basically to account for inflation inflationary rise in prices inflation indexing ke concept ke bare mein if you know then you know why the government changes the base year for calculation of gdp for calculation of all india consumer price index let's have a look let's have a look consumer price marginally uh, 7.4% was in may 2022 ministry of statistics and program implementation implementation it provides the data for cpi inflation cpi index based inflation there are four types of cpi industrial worker agriculture labor rural labor and urban non manual employees कैलकुलेट कैसे करते हैं सीपीआई को इट कैलकुलेट द कॉस्ट ऑफ बास्केट अपॉन द कॉस्ट ऑफ बेस ईयर इन टू हंड्रेड तो कॉस्ट दिस इज द वे बेस ईयर के बेसिस प्रेजेंट प्रेजेंट कॉस्ट अपॉन द बेस ईयर कॉस्ट सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर आज की बास्केट ऑफ गुड्स यूज होता है ना सीपीआई में सो आज अगर वन के जी ऑफ वीट का प्राइज इज रुपीज हंड्रेड वन के जी ऑफ वीट का प्राइज इज रुपीज हंड्रेड एंड वन के जी ऑफ वीट का प्राइज इन the particular base year was say rupees 50 right so in dono ki cost ko divide karke present all india cpi inflation this is just hypothetical just for the clarity of understanding ki ek base year ke basis pe present year ki cost ko we divide it to arrive at the present present uh, data of cpi so you all know what it means you all know ki rbi has also changed its inflation targeting policies under monetary policy committee to ensure to ensure that uh, you know cpi ke basis pe inflation targeting ab rbi follow karne laga hai pehle earlier it used to follow wholesale price index so this is what it is all about cpi basically uh, takes the consumer consumer prices in mind so all india cpi ka base year is 2012 industrial workers ka cpi is 2016 so kyun kyun aisa kyun hai ki purane cpi is ka base year bahut purana hai but current cpi for industrial workers is 2016 aisa isliye hai it is so because there is a, our wages jo hamara industrial wage hota hai industrial wage rate it is always indexed according to the inflation so present inflationary conditions ko dhyan mein rakhte hue present wage rate fix karna bahut important hai and that is the reason that is the reason why cpi for industrial workers is 2016 right and in charo cpi ke basis pe all india cpi is 2012 but a non manual employees rural laborers and agricultural laborers ka cpi itna purana hai so it is an open ended question to all of you it is an open ended question should the wages of agriculture laborers rural laborers these are daily wage in formal laborers jinka ye cpi calculate hota hai inka bhi base year increase karke kya 2016 ho jana chahiye you uh, let me know in the comments below okay moving on to the very last very interesting question of the day which sport is guru naidu sanapathi related to guru naidu sanapathi uh, is a badminton player she is related to the sport of badminton sorry she is not related to the sport of badminton she is related to the sport of weight lifting weight lifting has become india's first weight lifter to win a gold at iwf youth world championship app at leon mexico so this was it for today's current affairs thank you so much for watching if you have any doubts do post it in the comments below suggestions and feedbacks are more than welcome please post it down in the comments below and i hope this session was useful and insightful to all of you thank you so much for watching and see you in the next class take care and bye bye